The event announcement caused a fair amount of sort of trepidation, I'd say, between most of the teams. Team New Zealand were in the hot seat. I think in the end had to be applauded for coming up with a fantastic venue. I mean, one of the most iconic cities anywhere in the world, obviously a sailing city. We've seen, you know, 92 Olympics, you know, a whole host of major sporting events being hosted there and now the America's Cup. I think it's fantastic for both the city of Barcelona and of course for the America's Cup. Finally having a venue, it's important to all of the teams for a number of reasons. You know, clearly we're trying to plan our programme, so knowing the date and the venue helps us with our logistics and our grand strategy, if you like, for, for the campaign. We can, of course, start then looking at what do we need on the ground in Barcelona, what are the options in terms of a base layout, accommodation, travel to and from our home base. Uh, all those sorts of questions we can start ticking off. And of course, budget is important. So knowing a little bit more about what our costs are gonna be operating in the final venue. All of those things are really important to any team trying to operate at this level. I've sailed in Barcelona a couple of times, always had great conditions in September, October. You would expect to get a range of conditions, not necessarily just the sort of traditional Barcelona sea breeze. So I think it could be really challenging from a design perspective. Uh, shore side, I think the facilities should be second to none, certainly being right in the heart of the Marina District of Barcelona will be an unbelievable opportunity for the America's Cup to really showcase what the event's about, allow the fans to really get up close and personal to the boats and to the teams to create a real America's Cup village atmosphere. Nobody should be under any illusions just how difficult the task is to unseat a defender that we know now is well funded with this venue deal, has fantastic sailing team, a design team that has dominated the last two cycles of the Cup. Incredibly difficult to do that, but that's the task and we're up for it. This is the Sailing World on Water, June 3rd, 2022. The America's Cup may not be going to Jeddah, but the sailing scene there is booming. So happy that we actually finally have any wind sports over here in Jeddah or Saudi Arabia in general and uh, we've been waiting for this for a very long time. Hopefully that they continue at the same rate and uh, keep more people involved into that, not only just an experience but actually getting like a club and teaching people and actually having this as a permanent thing, not just an event for uh, one month a year. Oh, The first time also we get it, thank you, appreciate it too much. Also the team is very, very, very cute. We like it. Thank you very much. First time being on this boat, I didn't expect the tilt when we were going full speed. The winds keep hitting you with the water, so it was nice fresh air. The crew is amazing actually. Thanks for all of you. It was a wonderful experience. I really love the pedaling part, the grinding, yeah. تجربة جدا رائعة والتيم مرة كان بطل أول مرة أخوض هذه التجربة أشكر القائمين على الفعالية وعلى المكان المكان مرة كان جيد والجو كان مرة كان جو سعيد Thank you Damien Segan, skipper of Apisil shows how he climbs its mast with only climbing gear Bonjour à tous, je suis Damien Seguin et je suis skipper de l'IMOCA Groupe Apicil. Aujourd'hui, je vais vous montrer comment on monte en mât en solitaire sur un bateau avec un mât de 27 mètres de long. On y va Donc 
la problématique souvent sur ces bateaux-là, c'est et d'une, euh, on est en solitaire. Deux, quand on a un problème qui intervient proche de la tête de mât ou en cours de mât sur une voile ou une partie d'égrément, il faut qu'on monte donc tout seul, donc ça nécessite forcément du matériel adapté. Il faut plusieurs choses, il faut déjà un bon boudrier. Ensuite, euh, bah moi j'utilise un Love 2, en fait c'est un gris-gris pour monter, qui fait bloqueur à la montée et qui fait descendeur. Une poignée à main pour se hisser, qui est reliée à une pédale pour pouvoir euh, utiliser en même temps euh, les bras et les pieds pour monter. Et puis la dernière chose qu'il faut, on monte sur une corde euh, qui est tendue. L'intérêt de la corde tendue, c'est qu'on n'est pas en train de de se balader à 3 mètres de chaque côté du mât quand il y a des vagues. C'est pour ça qu'on s'entraîne un petit peu avant sur ces choses-là. C'est ce qui est intéressant aussi euh, quand on est plusieurs euh, au sein de la classe IMOCA à, à avoir du matériel. On sait souvent les, les bons tuyaux et les bonnes pratiques. Hops, allez, c'est parti. En fait, c'est relativement simple. Hein. Je, me, je monte la poignée, donc en même temps, j'ai le pied qui monte et la main. Donc je peux pouvoir à, chaque, à la fois pousser avec la cuisse et puis en même temps me tracter sur la poignée. Et à chaque fois, je peux me reposer complètement et ici, euh, mon bloqueur, euh, il prend toute la charge. Quoi. Donc là, euh, je peux m'arrêter. Euh, si j'ai besoin de travailler à mi-hauteur ou juste faire une pause, eh ben, j'ai le temps de le faire. Alors moi, ça m'est arrivé euh, sur le Vendée de monter euh, deux fois et notamment sur des problèmes d'électronique et d'aérien où voilà, je suis resté plus de deux heures euh, en tête de main avec euh, du matériel à faire des soudures et tout ça euh, en plein océan Pacifique. C'est magnifique je ne regarde pas un mauvais souvenir, mais je me suis entraîné, j'ai appris à, à vaincre un petit peu euh, mon appréhension et surtout avoir confiance dans mon matériel et je pense que la clé elle est là. Donc euh, moi le conseil que je donnerais c'est euh, entraînez-vous déjà euh, au port euh, sans que ça bouge ni rien du tout. Il faut prendre confiance en soi, dans son matériel et puis appréhender un petit peu la hauteur. Voilà, c'est quelque chose comme tout, hein, ça se travaille si on veut être performant. Day 3 of the Abanka 52 Super Series Biana Sailing Week. And the fleet is pumped. Day 3 here at the Abanka 52 Super Series Biona Sailing Week. Very different weather complexion today. Much lighter in the morning, almost still very warm, but it's still cold on the uh, sea surface. And so there's very little chance of a good sea breeze. So light winds, very challenging. Can we see new teams at the top? No, it'll be a little bit of a challenge because the uh, the way the wind here works in the light air is it doesn't mix well. In other words, the breeze at the top of the mast isn't necessarily the breeze that the uh, sails are seeing. So uh, it'll be a challenge for all the owners. Every day is a good day in the coach boat, really, but we don't make many mistakes over there. So we waited a little bit of time for the breeze to build. We had uh, seven or eight knots on the start line of race number five, and it's all about staying to the right. Gladiator start the committee boat end of the line, along with Value and Interlodge. They're early to the right. Phoenix, the regatta leaders, end up on the left. And at the top mark, it's Value leading with Gladiator and Interlodge. It's extremely close. Value stay to the right, looking downwind. Everybody else jibes early. And at the leeward gate is Gladiator taking the lead from Interlodge with Quantum in third. And the Gladiator really extend from there Top mark, Phoenix are in eighth and they really struggle for the rest of the race. But through the finish line, it's Gladiator taking their first win for Tony Langley's team, I think since 2018. Second through are Interlodge and third are Quantum and uh, Phoenix come through in eighth. The breeze is built slightly for the second race, about uh, eight or nine knots, maybe ten knots on the start line. It seems to be all about the getting to the right once again as we come off the start line. Gladiator are closed at the committee boat end of the line. Interlodge get away quite nicely, but uh, in fact the breeze comes through from the left. Quantums are on the left off the start line and they lead at the top mark from Allegra and Platoon. Once again, Phoenix are deep, they're seventh at the top mark. Leeward Gate, it's Quantum Racing from Allegra. And through the finish line, Quantum Racing win. Platoon second, Allegra third, and Quantum Racing take the regatta lead. It's those wonderful times where nobody's tacking on you. You're actually kind of in front and, and you can just kind of sail with the boat. Once we got off the line and kind of were able to sail on our own, we, we were able to find a good spot. It's so great to be back sailing again. The fleet and have everybody back. We got a whole season ahead of us. And so it's just a joy to see everybody again. Today was a much better day for us, not only because of the wind, but the boat was going better. And, and you know, we enjoy sailing that. Uh, obviously, we managed to do a very good start, go to the right, and then from there, it's so much easier when you are already ahead. No, we just got the bananas off the boat. Actually get them off the boat, get them off the chase boat and get them off the dock. 
<laughs> because we need to break this. <laughs> we just need to find our uh, groove. So the boat was actually going quite well in the second race, so we were quite happy with the way the boat was going. So after six races, the leaders are Quantum Racing now on 16 points, second Platoon on 18, third Phoenix on 22. Much lighter conditions on the Rio de Vigo today for the uh, 52 Super Series fleet. Two different winners, a nice win, first since 2018 for uh, Tony Langley's Gladiator team and Quantum Racing back in control, taking the top of the table just now with two days still to go. Tough day in the office for the Phoenix team and good to see Prevetsa back underwater after their problems, but two days still to go, anything can happen. Day 2 of the GC32 Riva Cup saw six solid races. Owner-driver teams once again did well on day 2 of the GC32 Riva Cup, but it was Alinghi Red Bull Racing and the Team Rockwell Racing team that spent the day at each other's throats. Yeah, nice day here in Garda, uh, good conditions, getting six races. Um, we're pretty happy with our races, except we broke our, our daggerboard uh, rate control, so we couldn't adjust the rate, which means for for three races we're suffering a lot and we had to uh, not finish two races but that's part of racing and then we got back for the last race which was good. Day 4 of the 52 Super Series Biana, and it's a light winds day so the crews will have to show their best light air sailing ability. Well, a beautiful morning here in Bayona in beautiful uh, northwest of Spain. It's very quiet, very still and quite hot. Forecast for the afternoon for racing is still going to be very light, uh, 6 to 10 knots, something like that. It's a very challenging race course. Uh, Phoenix had a tough day yesterday, Quantum Racing on top. But let's see who wins today. Today is going to be quite light. We've got um, the grading which is right around the corner and we need the, the heat to, to uh, pull it into the base. So we've been delayed for a bit. Um, I expect it to sort of build up to probably about 10 knots today and then at about 4 o'clock start to ease off again. I think we'll get some big lazy oscillations in the breeze. Little lefts of the defined right banana as uh, we, we call it in the sailing. But um, I think a little bit more variable today than, than yesterday. Uh, it's definitely going to be a better day for the Phoenix team. A delay again is the order of the day, waiting for the breeze to fill in, but we are rewarded with about seven or eight knots on the start line of race number seven. Once again, it's a case of making a choice, going up the left or right flank of the course in particular. Quantum Racing go off the left end of the line, Platoon go up right, and at the top mark it's Platoon with a small lead over Quantum Racing, Phoenix around in third. Now down the first run, Platoon go out to the left, Quantum Racing hold to the right, get much more wind pressure, they get through Platoon on that run, so Quantum Quantum then lead all the way round. On the second run, the same thing applies for Phoenix. Phoenix stay right, they get through Platoon, and at the finish line it's a win for Quantum Racing. Second are Phoenix and third Platoon. It was a super challenging day, very shifty. We sailed very well and Terry, Lucas and then Michele did a fantastic job. Doug was very focused and we enjoy and when you enjoy this tough day, it's good. Yeah, we had a tough day yesterday, but today we had a very good day. Oh yeah, we were very happy. Second round was very good, we sailed very well and we, luckily we jumped in front of Platoon. We had a little fight over there to the finish line, what was, was very good for us. Yeah. Uh, what we can do tomorrow, we just again, put everything on the racing area.
area and try to win all the races. So the standings are after seven races in top position are Quantum Racing on 17 points, second Platoon on 21 points, third Phoenix on 24. That's it for the penultimate day here in the Bayona, just a one race, very light conditions. The win for Quantum Racing gives them a good lead going into the final day, but it could be very different conditions. We're expecting sea breeze on the last day. Anything could happen. See you then. America's Cup teams are leading the Riva Cup, and it shows in days three and four. Well, after yesterday we have to do something. We tried to reset our um, brain, going back to basics, um, do our own stuff, watching our boat, our boat speed, and um, keep it simple. happy to win the first ever year in uh, Riva del Garda. The team show are really strong uh, racing skills uh, during the four days. Even uh, when we were behind, we did some really nice comeback. So uh, we are really happy to uh, find our, our good form uh, as we were uh, last year. Now it's good as well that uh, the second boat uh, finishing in fourth position. They did improve really well during the week and uh, I'm sure they're going to look uh, really strong uh, in Lagos for the next event. Sir Ben Ainsley profiles one of his leading crew members, David Freddy Carr. He's been with the team through many challenges. David Carr, or Freddy as he's commonly known in the sailing world, is a hugely passionate sailor who wears his heart on his sleeve and is all about Britain trying to win the America's Cup. I think his first America's Cup experience was with GBR Challenge back in 2003 as a nipper in the team and now he's one of our more senior sailors. A huge amount of experience, uh, incredibly passionate about the team. But also as an athlete, Freddie has a huge amount of natural capability, but when you combine that with his work effort and determination, uh, the numbers that he can push out, either on a grinding pedestal or now on a, on a cycle, are, are pretty phenomenal. He is a huge part of the engine room and sailing these AC-75s and a huge part of the whole team. It's the final day of the 52 Super Series in Spain, and three boats can win. Well, a thrilling final day in prospect here in Bayona. Light breezes, but it's a sea breeze conditions. It's a different wind direction to what we've seen so far. There are three boats with the best chance of winning the title here, but anything could happen in this wind direction. It's looking pretty good for racing. I think we might be a little bit delayed, but then the sea breeze is going to kick in. Probably uh, sort of ranging from 9 to 13 knots of breeze. But uh, sh we should be able to get two races in, which would be nice. would really like to get a win, but uh, I think the Quantum boys are going to be hard to catch.
Race number eight starts in a good sea breeze, a little bit more than forecast actually, 17 or 18 knots on the start line. Quantum Racing start well, one third down from the boat. Platoon tack away early, Allegra also got a good start, probably the best on the early part of the beat. But going to the right early, Platoon take that early lead, and then a left shift comes in gradually on the left side. Allegra ride that nicely, Allegra lead just and no more round the top mark with Sled in second, Interlodge in third, Phoenix are in fourth, Quantum Racing down in sixth. So it's all about about the uh, first run, Quantum Racing take a couple of nice jibes and going into the leeward gate get themselves up to third but it's Allegra who lead all the way through to the finish line, Quantum gets second through the line and Phoenix third. And so going into the final race off the regatta then Quantum Racing hold a seven point lead and seem to have very little to do, they just need a conservative final race to win the championship. So the final race starts in quite a light breeze way down to seven or eight knots on the start line, quite fluky and shifty and off the start line while Quantum Racing are are actually over the line early and have to recross. Meantime, Phoenix get the best shifts up the first leg and lead round the top mark. Quantum Racing are way down in ninth, but at the bottom mark, the breeze disappears almost completely. The race is abandoned and Quantum Racing live to fight another day and win the championship here in Bayona. We're happy with the way we sailed. We sailed really well in four out of the five days and uh, we showed that we're uh, we're in the hunt. Beautiful venue. No, I really enjoyed it here. It was a very challenging racetrack, but uh, hopefully we'll come back soon. I feel we sail really well and to be in the top three on this on this circuit is amazing and I start the season like that is very good. If we are able to be in the top three in all of the events, for sure we will be, have a chance to win the series. It's awesome. It's the first 52 regatta that I've won since 2018 and today we held our nerve in that first race. You know, the guys got a great start, team sailed the boat really well, got a little unlucky on the middle of the first beat and I uh, kept asking the question so it was great to get around them and get back up to the second spot. It just feels wonderful, you know, to be back uh, on the podium again like that and up top and to, to start out the season the right way. It was a lot of preparation, a lot of great work by the team, as you can imagine, all the teams are working hard, but we're just thrilled to be able to end up on top. So the final standings for the Abanca 52 Super Series Bayona Sailing Week, Quantum Racing win on 19 points, in second are Platoon on 26 points, one point behind on 27 are Phoenix, fourth are Interlodge on 39 and fifth Allegra 43 points. So a fitting finale to the first regatta of the season, great conditions all the way through the week. Everybody really has fallen in love with Galicia and with Bayona in particular. Great conditions on the water, a nice range of winds. Quantum Racing coming out on top in the end by a reasonable margin, but lots of different boats winning races and really this is going to be an incredibly open season. Yeah.